This is Joe, which is astrophoto.com, and tonight we're going to be taking an image of the pillars of creation. So tonight it's supposed to be clear for the first time in about four days and probably the last time in the next six days. So that leaves me one night, one window to capture a target. And normally I wouldn't be trying to rush something, but it's just, it, this summer has really been cloudy, uh, really rainy, not the normal summer that I'm used to. So I, I don't want to miss out on a clear night and I don't want to add to a project or start a project when I don't know uh, when I might finish it next because of the the time in between clear nights. So the weather unfortunately has me dialed in to trying to do one target a night for now. And that's fine, you know, you gotta go with the flow and I'm adaptive. So what I thought I would do is pick a really bright target so that I can um, get a pretty clean image for only five or six hours worth of total integration time. And what I decided on was M16, the Eagle Nebula. Um, but with my field of view on the Edge 8, which I still have on my mount at the moment, I thought I would go more dialed in and just say that I'm capturing the Pillars of Creation. Now, the, of course, the Pillars of Creation are very iconic from the Hubble telescope picture uh, taken almost 20 years ago, or over 20 years ago now. And I think everyone has seen that image. Um, maybe you don't recognize that you've seen it before, but then once you see it, you know, oh yeah, I know that image. And the Eagle Nebula is about 6,500 to 7,000 light years away from home. And it lies in the Serpents constellation. Now, for me, uh, where I live, it just gets above 30 degrees to the south. Uh, and, and during this time of the year, it's about the perfect time to grab it. So for, I've got a 20 degree hard stop because of the observatory. So that leaves me with just enough time in the evening to capture it. Uh, I've got about 18 degrees above the observatory wall. And right now is just the perfect time where I could start imaging uh, as soon as it gets dark and, and continue just to image throughout the night. Uh, there will be a meridian flip halfway through, but at least I'll be able to get the entire target all night. So I'll get a good six hours worth of integration time on it and that's probably all i'll get so hopefully the image comes out okay and you like it and we'll see what we could do now we just have to wait for it to get dark and we'll get okay so we're in nina and i've got m16 up here in the sky atlas and we're going to set it for the framing assistant and i've been using the hips to fits sky survey as opposed to the nasa sky survey because uh, this is in color and I was talking to Glenn the other day and he asked me if I had tried it yet and I hadn't. And so when I looked at it, I was like, oh, I, I got to use this from now on now because I, I like the color as opposed to the, the black and white from the NASA survey. What I'd like to do, I'm just going to scroll in a little, is get my, my rotation of this target about like that. And the reason being is because of my field of view, I'd like to get as much of the nebulosity as I can, but I also kind of like the way that the pillars of creation will be kind of going diagonal into the frame. Now, uh, first of all, I'm going to have to take some test shots to see if it's framed that way. Um, but I think from imaging a couple weeks ago on another target that's similar in this area, that my sensor is already kind of rotated this way. So I think I'm gonna be okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this target to a sequence and I'm just gonna do a simple sequencer. And we are in the nightly build of Nina. I've been using the nightly build because it actually integrates with your observatory. So I can, uh, I've been working on getting my roof to open and close as part of the Nina sequence. And I'm going to be showing that in an upcoming video here uh, shortly. So for now, um, we're going to go to target options and um, we're going to slew to target, center target, and start guiding. 
And then for autofocus, we're going to um, autofocus on the start and then on filter change. Uh, if it was winter or, or later in the year, right now it's summer and the, our temperatures aren't fluctuating that much, but normally I would also um, turn on if the temperature changes by more than 5 degrees and also the if the HFR amount changes by more than 10%. Um, but for tonight, I'm going to run it just like this, like you see here. We're going to be in bin 2 mode so that um, I can take advantage of the higher HDR since our image is going to fill pretty much the entire frame. We're going to dither on every shot. I'm at a gain of 120 and an offset of 24. The 120 is unity gain for the 294. For our filters, we're going to do, and we're going to start with hydrogen, just because I want to see uh, what the what the hydrogen looks like first. <laughs> no other reason. Uh, if the moon was going to be really bad tonight and <clears throat> come out later, I would start with oxygen, and if or if the moon was going to go down sooner in the evening, uh, then I would keep oxygen towards the end because, really, with narrow my narrow band. Uh, images, oxygen is the only one that really gets affected a lot by the moon. And they all do to some extent, but, but not as bad as oxygen does. And for my time, I'm going to do five minute exposures because this is a pretty bright target. And even at f7, uh, I think that a 10 minute exposure will blow out uh, the majority of the core. And we're going to try and get in 18 of each. So I'm going to add the other two in, we'll do oxygen next, and then sulfur, and it gives us a duration of 5 hours and 4 minutes. We also have a meridian flip coming up soon and focusing for each of these three. So I think I'll leave it at 18 each. I thought this was kind of interesting, I went ahead and started the sequence and it's gotten to the plate solving part of it and it's take it's done plate solving four different times now just moving um, a hair each time and it continuously says telescope not inside tolerance repeating and it just moves a little bit more and it does it again and moves it just a little bit more and um, I, I understand this is the nightly build there's gonna be these weird errors and bugs but I just thought this was kind of funny and wanted to put it up there So here's our first hydrogen alpha sub. I'm liking it. I like the angle and it's still just breathtaking to me each time I see the first sub of a new session. It's, it's hard to describe. Um, so my guiding isn't doing too good tonight. Uh, I keep fluctuating between the 0.6s and 0.7s, um, but it's not awful. And I'm also seeing a little bit of weirdness, a little tiny bit of elongated stars. Uh, it's not too bad. In, in this corner down here, it's a little weird, uh, a little flat. They're not quite round, but I, I'm being a little picky too. Um, so far, I'm, I'm liking this image. Hopefully, the six hours will be enough to get a good one. So I had a great time last night. It, it was so wonderful to get back out under the clear skies and do some imaging again. Unfortunately, the clouds are coming back, but that's okay because I had a great night last night and that'll hold me over until the next time we have some clear skies around here. I hope you liked the final image. If you like this type of content, please hit that like button. We'll see you in the next video.